So now that we've seen the main ways that we have of changing the location of our functions, let's apply that here to this function. f of x equals the absolute value of the quantity x plus 2 minus 5. Now you see the absolute value, so the first thing we're going to identify is the shape. Absolute value tells me it's a v-shape. Alright, so what have I done with this v-shape? Let's look to the inside. To the inside I see plus 2. Remember I hod over when it's inside? It's a horizontal shift opposite of what you see. I see plus 2, so that means I'm actually going to go the opposite direction. I'm going to go to the left two units. And then over, outside of your function, I see a minus 5. I'm going to do a vertical, a vertical shift exactly what I see. So it means I see a minus 5. I'm going to go down 5. Taking this information into account, go left, 2, down, 5. So from here, left, 2, down, 5, that's going to be your key point. Now, here's something that I like to do to try to keep things organized. I'm going to dash a horizontal and vertical line that will crisscross right here at that new point. Okay? This is going to act as my new origin. So a lot of times, if you've ever seen me graph, you're going to see me do something like you know, 0, 1, 2, 3. So I'm making this my new x-axis, and I build from here. I don't need to do a t-table of values. I just build from here. So using those absolute value key points, the absolute value of 1 is 1. The absolute value of 2 is 2. So I go up 1, 2. The absolute, absolute value of 3 is 3, and so on. So I keep on going to the edge of my graphing window with that shape and with those key points. And we know how this guy is built. He has that line of symmetry going through that vertex. So I can copy these points on the other side, <clears throat> just like that. Now notice that once I went left 2 and down 5, I didn't need to use those numbers anymore. That's where I start, and then I use the shape to finish the rest of this. I use those key points. All right, so going to the edge of the graphing window, putting arrows on the end, and the same thing here. To the edge of the graphing window with arrows. And there we have it. Pretty straightforward, I hope. All right, let's look at this next one. This next one is g of x equals x minus 4 quantity squared minus 2. First thing to note and to mark down is the shape. Since this is a square, we understand this is going to be the squaring function, which gives us a parabolic shape like that. All right, so what have we done with this? How have I shifted up, down, left, and right? Inside is where you have your horizontal shift, so I hod. Inside, horizontal, opposite of what I see. I see minus 4. I'm actually going to go plus 4, so that means I'm going to go to the right 4 units. And then, over. Outside, I see negative 2. It's a vertical shift, exactly what I see. So vertically, I'm going to go down 2 units. So let's apply that. We're going to go to the right 4, down 2, and that's going to be my new vertex. And just like I did on the last example, I'm just going to dash a new set of axes. Now, if I could, I would totally eliminate those um, axes that I already have drawn there. Because they're only really there for reference, right? I'm to the right 4 and down 2. And so from here, I build my new parabola. That's 0, 1, 2, 3. Know the key points. That's why we went over those guys in the previous series of videos. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. 3 squared is 9, so this was 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Whenever you are measuring these guys, you're measuring them from that new baseline, that new x-axis that I have dashed out. Now, knowing how the properties of parabolas work, I can copy these points over here, like so. Please understand that you are graphing a function. Functions must pass the vertical line test. So when you're graphing a parabola, do not get lazy, don't get careless, 
and do not try to curve back onto itself. So a parabola does not do this. It does not curve back onto itself. It keeps getting steeper and steeper as you go up. It also keeps getting wider and wider. Right? Also note that parabolas never go vertical. So if you draw a parabola that's on the ends and just goes straight up and down, you're being lazy, you're being careless, and that kind of stuff doesn't fly. So draw carefully, plot as many points as will fit on your graphing grid, and draw a nice smooth curve through all of them.